Next up is Matthew Jordan Scherer. <laughs> Excuse me. Matthew, say snake. Snake, the speech therapist would say to me each and every week. Nothing came easy. When I was a, when I was a kid, helping to repair the brain damage that had been done, at times, it seemed impossible. Progress was super slow. I really hated everything about the therapy. What I had to do on a regular basis made no sense to me at all. Instead of playing baseball and soccer growing up, my after-school activities consisted of visiting doctors, therapists, speech therapists, occupational therapists, vision therapists, and physical therapists. I had tutors of every single kind. That's right. A series of unfortunate medical events when I was very young left my fragile brain with permanent damage. <clears throat> I struggled with judgment. One time, when I was around three, I walked out of the house and wound up on the entrance of the 56 freeway. Unaware of danger, Thankfully, I was rescued by a good Samaritan. As a young kid, I didn't have an awareness of my differences. That awareness came later, and so did the pain, frustration, and anger. <clears throat> Socializing and friendships were super tough. I desperately wanted them, and I was the sweetest kid on two feet. <laughs> but most parents in my neighborhood were too messy were too busy making sure their kid was at the top of the class. Playdates with me were not a priority for them. Acceptance of differences and kindness didn't rank as highly as excelling in math and science. I was not exactly the most popular kid in the neighborhood. I was the special kid. Excluded from birthday parties, playdates, it would be years before I understood the full impact on my soul and my self-worth of a lack of inclusion. As I grew older, I began to struggle with isolation, loneliness, and depression. <clears throat> Most of my experiences with education throughout my lifetime, up until I reached college, were everything a good education lacked. I had a brain injury. I was diagnosed with an intellectual developmental disability, developmental disability at a very young age. As a result, the academic got wider between myself and other kids. Beginning middle school, I was put in special education. That's right. It was then, the first day in that classroom, that the reality, that the reality of how different I really was hit me in the face really hard. As I entered the classroom, my senses became warped, muting the sight and sound and feel of everything. I felt terribly uncomfortable. It didn't, I, I didn't belong there. I wanted out. Most of my classmates could not even feed themselves, talk, and had unusual behaviors. I felt completely out of place. My, normally ha my normal happy self began to fade away. Sadness slowly took over. My life was not what I wanted to be wanted it to be. The limits placed on me due to my struggles with learning and the perceptions of others defined how my education place took place and took away my hopes and dreams for the future. This environment in special education was extremely downright depressing and so not motivating. <laughs> Expectations in Expectations were ridiculously low. I was lumped into the category of students whose differences kept them away from the mainstream, far away. I felt like a throwaway, completely on the outside, looking in and longing to be like a wake kid. Goals in special education had to consist with how to behave in public, how to buy something at the grocery store, and how to dress properly. So I was the class superstar people. I was so awesome in that. I was so great at it. Really good at it. I was always behaved well, had the best manners in the world, charmed every single employee at the grocery stores we visited, like I still do. 
I wore cool clothes, I knew how to tie my shoes, but there was nothing there that addressed my dreams or desires for the future. <clears throat> I often just felt humiliated. I couldn't relate to most of these kids in my class. I sank into depression that was hard to find on a regular ba day daily basis. <sighs> By nature, I'm a happy-go-lucky kind of guy. But this constant reminder of where society has placed me, what its definition of a person with a disability is, what they thought I was capable of, shaped bits of pieces of my soul away, year by year. I went to Torrey Pines High School, a highly ranked school here in San Diego. <clears throat> there were parts I really enjoyed. I was part of ASB, went to many sporting events, managed a football team. There were times I felt part of the part of the typical teenage scene. But most times, I felt alone and very different. Other kids didn't know how to relate to a kid like me. What they didn't understand is how tough it was to be me. Their biggest problem was the sign between UCLA and USC. It was hard to feel sorry for them. I was just trying to find a way to complete my high school graduation requirements. <clears throat> I had one foot in the special world and one foot in the regular world. No matter how desperately I tried to get both feet in the regular world, that's my note, a force continuously pulled me back. I, fell sh I always fell short. There was no appropriate class for me. That didn't exist. The typical high school classes were too fast paced. I would receive no help. This was not an option. option. Resources didn't go to kids like me. I was in the group that was silenced, on the margin. The group no one paid attention to. Although I was the football team manager, the players knew I had a disability, and some tried to take advantage of the fact. Once Kevin, you know, the star player with big blue eyes, the kind of, the kind all the girls drooled over, bribed me to touch a girl inappropriately for a fee of five bucks. He and his friends were surprised when I declined his offer. I wish I had the guts to say, hey, asshole, I have more that you don't have, and I'm not going to do that, idiot. <laughs> then Junior Yo came along. This is awesome. I thought I hit the jackpot when the popular drop dead Toy Simpson accepted my invitation to prom. I got a great suit, ordered the corsage, carefully matching her dress, color to the ribbon. I made dinner reservations. Bought the tickets, we agreed to meet at the prom. <clears throat> I arrived, not wanting her to wait one minute for me. I waited and waited. I stood there with my corsage in my hand, in the cold, drizzly night, with my shiny black shoes, hair perfectly combed, and waited. Two hours later, it was obvious she had ditched me. My parents did pick me up, and I was devastated. But the next day, I blocked that nasty sound of a gun on Facebook. I still have a phone number, but I blocked her on Facebook. <laughs> Never to speak to her again. She was mean. <laughs> to, make matters, to make matters worse, I had to take the small school bus with kids to, I had to take the small yellow school bus for kids with disabilities to school each and every day. I was the only kid on that bus that could talk. The bus driver and I quickly became great buddies, of course. Talking about sports, news, events. Gary was the nicest guy ever. He actually got me for once. Hey, Matthew, who's going to win the game tonight? His enthusiastic conversations and genuine smile was something I looked forward to each and every day. When I hung out with Gary, I didn't feel special. <clears throat> Learning was a very difficult thing to do considering the environment. My peers and an educational system that was not prepared to support my special needs. This frustrated me because I desperately wanted to, because I desperately wanted to learn. Instead, dark to dark worksheets became routine. I was into rock music, current events, sports, and the ladies. <laughs> Field trips to grocery store and pumpkin patches did not serve me very well. I was stuck into, in classes that prepared me to occupy certain rungs on the social ladder, not rungs that matched goals that I sent for myself. 
I wanted a high school diploma and an opportunity to go to college. <clears throat> Make matters worse. The school required me to participate in a work program with students for, with disabilities. I worked at a grocery store two days a week for two years. <sighs> my mom was, my, 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 sorry, my, mom, my job was to look for expired dates on the dairy shelf. I protested and I complained, and my mom got emails that Matthew doesn't seem motivated to do his work. They were 300,000% white. I really wasn't motivated in my work. It was the stupidest thing ever. It really wasn't a job. <laughs> I, I should have been in prison for all I knew. Back in the classroom, I was always nice to everyone and helpful to all, my, to, to all the other students. And at times, I, f was, I felt like the only person that was actually there for those kids. I routinely mopped up drool that continu continuously flowed out of my classmates' mouth. I tried to be a calming force for some of the others that easily were agitated. In this crowd, parents frankly wanted me to spend time with their kids. I seriously felt like a mentor, and, and I had to be happy all the time, because if I wasn't, I'd be worried, I'd be looked down upon. After a while, I didn't want to be a role model. I wanted role models on my own. I couldn't own a high school diploma because I wasn't in diploma-bound classes. I was in classes that led me nowhere, meant nothing. Me and my mom would sit in actual IEP meetings or school meetings and fight the system, but it was always a losing battle. I once saw a teacher roll her eyes at me when at me and my mom, when we were trying to set important goals for me. How dare she? My mom gave her a piece of, my, of her mind. I'm usually a calm person, but at that moment, I felt like reaching across the, room, the table and smacking her. I could hardly contain my rage and anger. I had a hard time accepting my disability, and honestly, I still do struggle with that. Now, I am 21 years old, and I am entitled still to receive services from the high school until age 22. At 19, I totally have enough of the program, cut the ties with special education, and a world heal at San Diego City College. Thank you. Thank you for all your support, people. It was the best decision I have ever made. Go Knights. <laughs> I am proud to say after four semesters of college work, I have a solid 3.14 GPA. <laughs> Man. I love shocking people that didn't think I could do anything. I feel part of a community. I feel value. I feel like I matter. The feelings of sadness have mostly been replaced with the feelings of gratitude for the opportunities I have now. I am working towards my goals of being employed in the broadcast news business. I am working harder than I have ever worked before. I am happier than I have ever been. I have many academic challenges, and know I always will, but I have been given a chance, and that means more than I can ever put into words. Recently, while I was driving my own car, I pulled up, yeah. I love having a license. It's the best thing in the world. I pulled up beside a yellow school bus at a red light. Behind the wheel of the school bus was my old driver, Gary. He yelled out the window, hey, Matthew, you are the coolest kid I ever drove. I am probably the only kid that he ever drove that now has a license of his own. Thank you very much, guys.